There are some people that would argue the best way to advertise your music is through Instagram slash Facebook marketing, typically through a sponsored story post or a sponsored feed post. Well, I have an album that I just dropped and it's time to tackle the beast of Instagram marketing head on and shove my album down the throats of Instagram users all over the world. Water Pack, this is your leader, Patrick CC, demanding you to drink water while watching this video or seltzer, whatever, it's the same thing, it's just spicy water. Stay hydrated. One thing I know about Instagram marketing, if your ad sucks, nobody's clicking on it. Now in the case that you're advertising your music, please don't just post a screen recording of your song on SoundCloud or Apple Music or Spotify or whatever streaming service and sponsor it and try to push it out because it's lazy, it's ineffective, it's not gonna work, nobody's gonna click on it. Waste of money. Think about the last time you saw an ad that made you stop, at least one that grabbed your attention or maybe the one that made you buy something. What jumped out at you and how can you implement that into your own ad? The ads that always grab my attention are ones with with a real person addressing the camera directly and it feels like they're talking to me or you. I know you've all seen the ads out there that are like, this is how I made $350,000 sitting at my home computer. And I know that sounds kind of silly, but for whatever reason, those ads always grab my attention. Probably because it feels a little bit more natural and less like an ad. Now, keeping all that in mind, here's the ad that I made. 30 different underrated artists, one album, executive produced by me, you decide whether it's good or not. Really short, direct, and to the point. The faster that you can get to the point, the better your ad is gonna be. Now this is gonna be an Instagram story ad, so the thinking here is they're flipping through people's stories, they're gonna see my face, it's gonna feel pretty natural, right? It's gonna feel like something they might see on anybody's story. And then I wanna have like this overwhelming or shocking factor with all of the artists popping up on screen along with the noise ticker sound to sort of go along with it. So immediately you see my face, you're like, okay. And then you're kind of overwhelmed and you're like, whoa, what's happening? And once I get past that first two seconds and I have your attention, immediately I drop music. This is my album. Let me know what you think. In addition to that, I feel like asking people what they think rather than saying, oh, this album is so great or trying to get a quote from a blog or trying to oversell it and make it seem like it's this crazy thing that people are missing out on. It's just like, try it. Check it out, maybe. I feel like that's kind of a slept on advertising strategy. But before I do the $500 campaign, we gotta do a small one first, a little test campaign. So let's go talk about that. Now I definitely recommend that if you're gonna do a campaign similar to this, that you gotta do like a trial run or a test run before you go all in and spend all of your budget. $25 is the minimum amount that you can spend to run an Instagram or a Facebook campaign. So let's start with that. First thing you need to do is to connect your Instagram account to a Facebook account because all of the ad stuff is done on Facebook and you need to have a Instagram business account to be able to do that. So do that first, then go to the ads manager to set up your campaign. Now I'm not gonna go into all of the tiny details and what they mean because there are so many other better YouTube videos out there that you could watch. They probably know a lot more, but I'm just gonna run through some key ones for my campaign and maybe valuable to yours. Our age demographics are gonna be from 13 to 30. They're gonna be English speaking people for me, whatever language your song is in, do that. And the interests, some of them are hip hop, fashion, YouTubers, alternative hip hop, music. Facebook is gonna give you a bunch of like recommended ones when you start to kind of type in a lot of data or you type in hip hop and it'll give you all different sort of variations of that. Just think about what ones make the most sense for your campaign and pick them. And pick a lot of them too. Don't just do like music or rap or indie or something super vague. Like try to get as specific as possible. And also you should focus on the genre and the music aspect of it, but think about other things that people may be interested in that would appreciate your music. For example, Starbucks, when they're running an ad, they're not just gonna run it against people who like car coffee or coffee drinkers. They might target people who like books or bookstores because people who like reading, they probably also like drinking coffee while they're reading. You know what I mean? Think outside the box. Our estimated reach is between 2,000 and 6,000. That's how many people are gonna potentially see the ad. And the estimated amount of link clicks is about 15 to 30. And this is all for a $28 budget. Also, we're only gonna run the ad for 24 hours because that's just, I mean, it's quick, you know? Also, I forgot to mention this, but the swipe up link, so the thing that actually we want them to do so they can go from the ad to the streaming service is my DistroKid like link tree type of thing. So when they see it, they're allowed to choose what platform they want. I figured that's probably probably the best chance of success because you don't know if people just use Spotify or Apple Music, figure I give them the option. All right, it's time to do this thing. See you in 24 hours.
What up? I know you missed me. The results are in. So after 24 hours, we got 76 link clicks with 7,728 people reached with a 0.95% result rate. The stats are pretty solid. The average click rate for an Instagram story ad is about 0.33%. So we're at triple that, which is pretty good. Of the people that did click, 89% were males. Of those males, 43% were ages 13 to 17, 33% were ages 18 to 24, and 13% were ages 25 to 34. So Clearly the target market is males age 13 to about 24, 25 years old. However, upon further research, we discovered that the type of campaign that we did, which was a traffic campaign, may not be the best. A traffic campaign only tracks how many people clicked or swiped up on the ad. So it could be bots clicking this, or it could be literally 76 people swiped up and then just immediately closed it. So it doesn't tell us if they actually went to Spotify or Apple Music or any of the ones on the link tree, which is pretty much useless to us. But with a conversion campaign, Facebook tracks a successful conversion as somebody who swipes up and then clicks one of the links that's in the link tree. And with that being said, I wanna do another 24 hour test campaign, this time tracking conversions. Also, I wanna switch up a couple other data metrics to see if we can maybe have some more success. This time we're gonna simplify the tags and who we're targeting. We're gonna target people who are interested in Spotify and also interested in hip hop, so they have to match those two specific things. And then for locations, I did all of the US, Canada, Australia, Germany, and the UK because those are my top five listening locations on Spotify. We're also gonna test out a feed ad as well as a story ad. So the $28 is essentially gonna be divided amongst those two different types of ad copies. So we need another 24 hours. Let's see which one's more successful. Hey, so it's been a little bit longer than 24 hours because we kind of ran into a few speed bumps. Now our intuition and our research was right. The traffic campaign was definitely not the right one to go with. The right one was the conversion campaign. But if you look here at the results, it says that we don't have any, just nothing. It doesn't even say zero, it just says like, just. No, none, nothing. But it also says that we have 181 link clicks. So surely you have to think, if you have 181 link clicks, at least one of them clicked on Spotify, right? Well, it turns out we set up the campaign wrong again. Maybe some people clicked on Spotify, but because of the way we set it up, We'll never know. Now I'm not an expert, I never claimed to be. This is actually the first time I've ever really done any Facebook or Instagram advertising. So I'm learning just like you. So we're doing this together. But the good news is off camera for the past few days, we've been figuring it out. I think we got the right meta and I can't wait to show you. I'm gonna show you, but first I'm gonna go back in here. All right, if you want the tiny little details of everything and how to set up all of these things perfectly, there's tons of videos out there, but I'm just gonna speed run this process. First thing you wanna do is set up your pixel, go to events manager, click connect data source, click web, get started, then click Facebook pixel. And that's literally all you have to do to get the 15 digit code. Copy that code, go to DistroKid hyperfollow page. Obviously if you use a different service, then this isn't gonna directly apply to you, but it'll be something similar. There's tons of other ones. Go to customize, edit this page and scroll down where it says got an ad or analytics pixel and drop that down and Facebook pixel ID. That's where you will copy and paste your 15 digit code. So now you've basically told DistroKid, this is my Facebook pixel account. Y'all can do this now. Now go back to your events manager, go to test events, test browser events, copy your hyperfollow link, paste it into there, open website, and basically click that one, X out, go back, click Apple Music, wait, X out, go back, and you get what I mean. Keep opening the website, clicking on one, and Xing out. This is so you can activate those clicks. So now Facebook is tracking those clicks. And then at this point, you just wait. For us, it took a couple hours, actually. Some people say it takes a few minutes. Some people, maybe, I guess it could take a day. But eventually, in the overview, you will see basically all of that data. So I guess for you, if you're very small and you're just starting out on click Spotify, you'll see one click and Apple Music, you'll see one click. But for me, this is tracking data for the first 18 hours of when I set this up. In that 18 hours, I got 403 Spotify clicks, 116 Apple Music clicks, 90 on YouTube. You get what's happening here. And this data will show you basically all of the total clicks that you're getting every hour. So cool. Now 
now you're linked up. Facebook Pixel is showing all your clicks. That's what you want. But this is not giving me the data from the specific ad. You see, I have my DistroKid HyperFollow landing page in my Instagram bio, it's in my TikTok bio, it's in tons of different YouTube videos that are getting thousands of views any given hour. So people from all over driving traffic to these links and clicking on Spotify and Apple Music and whatever. So I don't know exactly where they're coming from. And that's a big problem that we had that we now figured out. So here we go. You're creating an ad. You wanna do a conversion campaign, new campaign, name it whatever you want, double check that it's a conversion campaign right there and turn on campaign budget optimization. Well, I mean, at least that's what we were doing. Daily budget of whatever your budget is. Basically, this is the max that it'll spend on any given day. It doesn't necessarily mean that it will. Our budget will be 30 bucks, next. This is your ad set name. Whenever I name this, I just think about naming like the audience or the people that I'm targeting. Now, this is the key thing that we messed up that is super, super critical that you do. Right here, you're gonna see conversion event. When you click conversion event, you're gonna see the drop down bar and you're gonna see all of these events that you can choose from. Now, when we were doing it the first time, we noticed that none of these match what we need. Contact, donate, subscribe, view content. We didn't really know what was happening here. So we just clicked view content and then we ran an ad and that's why we didn't get any results because this wasn't the right conversion event. What you want to do is click down here, define a new custom conversion, just something we saw later. Name it. We already did it, but we'll do stream Apple music, even though we're focusing on Spotify, it's going to track it to your pixel. Then for your conversion event, you can choose any of the ones that are part of your pixel, any of the events. For this one, we named it Apple music. You know, we click on Apple music. So now the data that Facebook is going to track from this ad is only people clicking on Apple Music. And then you would hit create, but we're only focused on Spotify. We already created that one. So then once you do it, it'll be at the top there. Stream Spotify. You're going to get this error. Just ignore it. It's not going to go away. For budget and schedule, pick the time that you want it to start. And there's a little trick that seems to work. And that's not selecting an end date. Basically, you just kind of allow Facebook to do its thing. Check up on it every hour, every few hours, every day or multiple days if you want. And you can just kind of let Facebook spend, well, the way it's set up now, it would be $30 a day, but pick whatever. You could do $2 a day, $5 a day, and just let it run. And then at that point, you could just manually stop the campaign whenever you want. Apparently, it works a little bit better, and maybe it's true. It seemed to work pretty well for us. So that was the key information, the conversion event. And once we figured that out, we actually started getting results. And I'll show you. So remember before on view content when it showed nothing? Now we have 558 conversions. What that means is 558 people people clicked on our ad and then also clicked stream Spotify. We got 727 unique link clicks. So that means that 180 people or whatever clicked something other than Spotify, but we're not tracking that. So we don't really know. We had a 60,000 total reach, 65,000 impressions. Basically it cost us eight cents for every click. This is only $45 spent. $45 for 558 people definitely clicking on Spotify. Maybe they listened, maybe they didn't, but I would say that's that's pretty successful. It goes a little bit further. So we divided our budget into two different audiences. So the first time we only did the, basically the top five countries that my Spotify and data comes from or whatever, which is the US, UK, Australia, Germany. Targeting my top five countries only got me 132 clicks. Whereas when I targeted basically the rest of the world that Spotify is available, we got way more clicks. We got way more reach, way more impressions, and it was significantly less costly. For 22 bucks around the world, we got 426 clicks. For 22 bucks just in those top five countries, we only got 132 clicks. So if I were you and I was just getting started, I would probably just target the whole world because you never really know where you're gonna develop a fan base and who could possibly like your music or where they could be living. When we targeted all countries, which is basically all countries that have Spotify, look at all of them. That's a lot of opportunity. Yeah, so 448 clicks could have came from anybody from any of those countries. So you just decide where you want people to be listening to your music and target those people. I know this video has been maybe a little messy 
and a little chaotic, but that's because we're just learning along the way and that's how it goes, baby. As close to a real marketing strategy or campaign as it probably could get. But I do wanna try one more thing. Instead of investing a ton of money into what is already showing a little bit of success here, I wanna change the type of ad that we're doing. And I want it to try to resemble or mimic something that you would do. So you, person who's promoting their music and doesn't have an album like mine and doesn't have a YouTube following or whatever, taking my face out of the ad, just promoting the song and seeing how many clicks and streams we can get from people just hearing the song. Let's go set that up. My love's like a black hole sun, so bright when it burns, so dark when it's done. So hard to relate to one when I find myself tripping off that blunt. Tripping off this blunt, so I might be blunt if I do confront you. So that was the ad. I wanted to take my face out and create something that you could create, or you probably will create. You could probably even pay someone on Fiverr to do something similar to that. And over the weekend, I ran that ad on Instagram using all the same parameters that I just talked about in the video, trying to see how many people would click just based on how the song sounds. Here are the results. I meant to run my ad in my top five countries for Spotify as well as globally, but for some reason the top five one didn't work. And I'm not even gonna address why, because <laughs> I, I don't know. Anyways, the global campaign worked. The ad ran for about three days. We got 829 Spotify conversions for $110, which averages to about 13 cents per Spotify conversion. So basically it cost me twice as much to reach the same amount of people with this ad versus the ad that has my face on it. So for me personally, I'm gonna keep running the ad with my face on it because that's what's working. However, you guys don't have that option. But I was really curious to see how it would work with just the song. That doesn't necessarily mean that it'll be the same with your ad. Maybe more people will like your song. Maybe less people will like your song. No two ads are exactly the same. And I guess it just depends on what you think. For $110 getting 829 clicks onto Spotify, I mean, I think it's pretty good. I think I would like a lot more, but I don't really have enough experience running Instagram, Facebook ads to even know what I want. <laughs> so after it was all said and done through all my experiments, I spent $326 with 2,419 link clicks. How many of them were actually conversions to Spotify? We had some hiccups throughout the process, so those totals aren't exactly accurate to the success of the campaign, but we did have some some high moments that were good and definitely some, some errors, some mistakes. But even still with all those hiccups, that averages to about 13 cents per link click. This is easily the cheapest and most affordable way to promote your music, at least that I'm aware of. I mean, even for a couple dollars, $5, $10, $20, you can get a pretty decent amount of people to stream your music potentially if you have the right ad. And maybe this video will help you do that. So the numbers may not seem staggering to you, but I think if you're an artist trying to get discovered, this might be your go-to way. And this is the only time I ever did any Instagram marketing. If you want to see me do it again, if you want to see me do a way more expensive budget or a really cheap budget, or maybe I'll do like a dollar a day, or if you just want more of this type of content, let me know because I've never done it before and I definitely made a lot of mistakes along the way. So hopefully if there is a next one, we don't do that. And if it helped you, definitely drop a like on the video, comment something. This was a, this was a long process and make sure you're subscribed if you're not. And most importantly, you gotta be drinking water.